Hello friends, this video on chemical kinetics part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. See, if you see any reaction, what happens is the molecules react. The molecules react and form some bond and they form product. See, the molecules react and the product is formed. Right? So products are formed when this reactants the molecules of the reactant they collide and there is a process of breaking older bonds and the process of forming new bonds right so we break old bonds in this product creation process for example i have reactant from when i'm getting going for a product so i need to break old bonds and i need to create new bonds Please note, this is just a theory. And that this may be happening. Now the process of breaking the old bonds, it requires energy. This need energy. The old bonds will not be broken on its own. Somebody has to provide energy. So the reaction to happen actually, the molecules should collide with each other as we have seen here. The molecules colliding. And they should collide in a proper orientation and they should have energy that is greater than the threshold energy and that threshold energy should be able to break the old bond and that's what i'm saying that they should have energy there is a threshold energy and these molecules they should have energies greater than the threshold energy and then only they can collide and they can break the old bond because we're talking about breaking old bonds creating new bonds so to break something we need energy right so the minimum energy to break a bond is my threshold energy so these molecules when they are colliding they should have a minimum energy to break and to form product if these guys don't have minimum energy the collision will happen but the collision will not be effective it's like if i'm to break a uh, wall I do hard, hit hard with the hammer even if I hit in a uh, light way the wall will not be broken right it has to be very hard hit and that hard hit is nothing but the extra energy which we am providing to break the wall same thing when we are creating a new product I'm breaking, breaking the old bond creating a new bond to break the old bond I need the energy and the minimum amount of energy that is required to break the old bond is my threshold energy Right? So the reactant should acquire a minimum amount of energy to convert this into product. And this energy is called activation energy. Right? The energy that is required to start the reaction is called activation energy. And this term was introduced by Arrhenius itself in 1889 to explain his concept. Right? So minimum energy required to start a reaction is called a what activation energy its unit is kilojoules per mole example you have this bomb but if you just keep the bomb it won't burst you need small amount of energy small fire can break can burst this bomb right this small fire will provide the activation energy for the bomb to burst same thing in the gas, right? So we have a gas, LPG gas, but it won't light on its own. You need the lighter. And lighter provides a small amount of energy. Just a spark. And with that spark, then everything works fine on its own. So small amount of energy, right? That's, that is required to start a reaction is called my activation energy. So as for the RNAs, for a reaction to happen, he's saying, the collision has to be there and it has to be strong, right? And it should produce a reaction. But if you see, the two cars, they are going in a slow direction. They will not produce a huge bang and the product will not be formed. There has to be huge bang. Let me repeat once again. Two cars coming with a high speed, there is a bang. And this bang means a collision happened, right? And then the product will be formed. But if the two cars are coming at a slow speed, they will bang but not with that impact will not be there 
it will be just ouch the product will not be formed so they should have energy these cars should have energy activation energy to break right one more understanding of the activation energy concept is like this you are on this hill right you want to throw this ball but actually if you see if there is no shape like this you can actually just a small push will or the ball will roll on its own actually if, if, if there is no hill like this the ball will roll on its own but if you see this state and this state this has less energy if you talk about the potential energy from physics point this has more energy correct so typically everything wants to go from more energy state to lower energy state if I keep a ball here just in the air it will come down on its own because here we have more potential energy here we have less potential energy like on its own it will go down delta h will be less right spontaneous reaction but here if you see there is a structure there is a hindrance so this extra energy if you pass to this ball if you keep this ball somewhere here the ball will then roll on its own so this extra energy is the activation energy hope you are understanding the ball here is position 1 and here we have position 2 at position 1 has more energy than the ball at position 2 typically if there is no hindrance ball will on its own go to position 2 because the potential energy at position 2 is less but because the hindrance ball is not able to go if you want ball to move from 1 to 2 that is more energy to a lower energy state or I can say this is my reactant and this is my product so generally if delta H is less than 0 my product has more energy and that's why delta H is less than 0 right for a given reaction for a reaction reacting to product if delta H is less than 0 that means my product is more stable than reactant then that's why the reaction happens right the whole purpose of the reaction is that they want to be more stable because the hindrance the ball will not be able to go but if you provide this extra energy and that is nothing but activation energy the ball will be able to go this is my reactant reactant will not form products on its own because the in the hindrance if you provide the extra energy there is a hindrance activation energy then the reactant will by default automatically become product that is the concept if you see now from the chemistry perspective let's suppose this is my reactant and they have some 50 kilojoule energy and the product by default will have let's suppose less here 30 kilojoule of energy so by default the product should go to reactant on its own but that is not what it happens right you need to provide some energy to start the reaction we have seen that the bomb also doesn't blast on its own there has to be some energy provided then if you see delta H is negative that means it is a spontaneous reaction it should happen on its own but it doesn't happen most of the case it doesn't happen we have to provide some energy and why it is not happening because the curve is something like this and why it is like this because if you see we will see in the next slide when you go from reactant to product there is something called active heat complex that is formed that is the intermediate step that has more energy so it is like a mountain here you have to cross this mountain and this energy which we have to provide is called threshold energy barrier so if you can just cross this threshold energy barrier you can buy you'll by default go at this level similar to the ball rolling example if you can somehow provide this value then it will go on its own so this extra energy is called the activation energy of the forward reaction if it is um, equilibrium kind of reaction will have forward activation energy for the backward reaction also and that will be nothing but threshold bar barrier minus the energy of the product here it is threshold barrier minus energy of the reactant so in this case this is 115 kilojoule minus 50 that is this value is nothing but 65 kilojoule and this value is 115 minus 30 that is 85 kilojoule if you see activation energy of forward reaction is less than backward reaction that means that's why the reaction moves in the forward direction because you need more energy to push the reaction to backward direction so if you have reactant and product the equilibrium kind of thing so to move push reaction in the forward direction you need 65 kilojoule of energy and to push reaction in the backward direction you need 85 kilojoule of energy 
you need more energy to push reaction in the backward direction and that's why the reaction moves in the forward direction because you need less energy to move the reaction in the forward direction right this is my reaction coordinate progress and this is my energy actually hope you understand this is my reactant this is my product delta h is less than zero product will have less energy as compared to reactant by default reaction should happen on its own but it doesn't happen we have seen this right the bomb doesn't blast on its own it needs a spark and that does nothing but activation energy these these are all theories it came because of the observation in the real world in the real world it is seen that the reaction part of the reaction doesn't happen on its own they need some push and this is the push and this push is nothing but activation energy please note activation energy for the forward direction is the difference between the threshold energy and the energy of the reactant activation energy is not 115 kilojoule in this case the threshold energy is 115 kilojoule but the reactant already had 50 kilojoule of energy so the difference it was lacking was only 65 kilojoule correct See, reactant already had 65 kilojoule of energy but it needed 115 kilojoule of energy so the difference the difference is my activation energy the extra energy that is required for the reactant to move into product is my activation energy okay so we'll take some example for this for example hydrogen plus iodine becomes hi right so if we take see this step similar step here here i have a hydrogen molecule here i have iodine molecule right now when hydrogen and iodine combine if you see they come to each other these bonds break these bonds old bonds will break and new bonds will be formed if you see the new bonds are formed and the old bonds will break correct so the breaking of bonds will require energy so this complex which you see this is the complex we call this is called activated complex right so it is proposed okay this is proposed that this activated complex is formed when my hydrogen iodine molecule collide and this activated complex has more energy it needs more energy you see if this is this has some give some value here i don't know the actual value of this so let's suppose this is x and this is x plus y so it, if you see there's a difference of y y kilojoule let's suppose this is in kilojoule this is typical energy right kilojoule per mole so extra y kilojoule per mole energy is required because this activated complex has more energy it requires more energy and this is little unstable and this is formed only when they collide at proper orientation and this complex is formed for a short duration and then this breaks once this is here it breaks and it, it becomes the old bond breaks and if you see my hi is formed now 2hi right this is 1hi this is 1hi here 2hi formed correct if you see this is my h hydrogen iodine this is my final product hi hydrogen iodide they have lesser energy than my reactant so there is a delta h so delta h is negative but still the reaction doesn't happen on its own it needs some spark why why it needs a spark because it is proposed now it needs a spark that is the experimental data why it needs a spark is a theoretical concept it is said that they form a complex and this complex has more energy right? it forms a complex this is a complex it forms and then this complex is formed for a very short duration and then it breaks right so assume that this energy of the activated complex here is ec in this case so this value is ec x plus y and energy of the reactant is x that is er so my threshold energy or activation energy sorry activation energy is nothing but ec minus er that is ec is nothing but if you see is the threshold value of the activated complex and there is nothing but x plus y here and energy of reactant we have seen is x subtract this you get y so y is the extra energy this is the extra energy this only extra energy is my activation energy right so energy activation energy is nothing but the extra energy required to start a reaction 
for the backward reaction you just saw it will be this threshold energy minus this value that is energy of product this is energy of reactant so for ea or backward reaction will be ec minus energy of product and this will be even less than x if you see right so we have shown that this energy activation or backward direction is more actually and that's why the reaction moves in forward direction so i don't want to repeat the concept once again this is just an example of the concept we, we just explained in the last slide okay so we can also define activation energy as the extra energy required to form the complex intermediate correct right. note that in most of the, almost all the graphs if you draw if a is here the product will be lesser the product will have lesser energy than the reactant because we are talking only about spontaneous reaction for which delta h is less than zero so it will always be something like this this is reactant this is product there has to be some delta h for a complex reaction which happens in multi step so if you see there will be humps like this correct right? so this will be my step 1 step 2 step 3 now all these steps will have some energy of activation activation energy the maximum activation energy will be the activation energy of the complex reaction the maximum activation energy of the slowest step or the slowest step will have the maximum activation energy obviously by right for right because that is slowest because it has maximum activation energy so slowest step will have max e right and the max ea will become ea of complex reaction max ea of any step so let's suppose this is a complex reaction it happens in three step it will have humps like this obviously to cross this hump it will take more energy right high threshold value so this will be slowest step and that's how it happens for a complex reaction it doesn't happen in one step we told that in the molecularity concept at the max we have tri molecular at the max three molecules combine to form product but they have we have seen reaction where by the balanced reaction it looks like 10 or 12 molecules are combining with each other but actually that doesn't happen it happens in different steps so if we draw in different steps you can draw something like this this is my original reactant so this will be the product of the first step that will be the product of the second step and this will be the final product correct and the one which will have maximum activation energy will be the slowest step so this is also one way activation energy diagram is also one way of determining which is the slowest step thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more Thanks once again.